The fall of the Ottoman Empire at the end of the First World War left the Near East divided into spheres of influence. In a secret agreement known as Sykes-Picot in 1916, the Allies, namely France and Britain, carved the Arab world between them, even though Britain had actually promised independence to the Arabs who had helped them oust the Ottomans. While Lebanon and Syria were controlled by the French, Palestine was taken by the British, who had assured Sharif Hussein, leader of the 1916 Arab Revolt, that after the war, Palestine would be part of an independent, greater Arab kingdom. At the same time, however, they promised Lord Edmund Rothschild, a prominent member of the World Zionist Organization, a homeland for the Jewish people. A letter sent by British Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour expressed British government support for Zionist aims in Palestine. One of the key motives behind this conflicting British policy rested on the importance of Palestine as a strategic point on the land and sea routes to India and as the last stop of pipelines from the rich oil-bearing regions of the Middle East. The 1917 Balfour Declaration brought about the single biggest crisis the Arab world has faced in the modern era. By the late 1920s, the rising number of settlers led to resentment and clashes. The Palestinians did not view these new European arrivals as immigrants, but as colonists. In the 1920s and 30s, as the numbers of Jews reached new peaks, the Palestinians, supported by their Arab neighbors, began their resistance. There were armed clashes, both with Jewish settlers and with British troops. The culmination of the Palestinian resistance happened in the famous uh, revolt of 1936-39. This is a, a, a period which is usually put in the shade, but that was the climax of the uh, tragic dilemma of the Palestinian people where they had to fight two enemies. They had to fight British mandate and they had to fight Israeli settlement. So you have in 1936-1939 a general strike of one year. You have a rural guerrilla warfare of three years, which led the British to reconquer Palestine with 30,000 British troops. The Jews had an almost complete state. While our leadership was being dismantled, our leaders arrested, and for the most part, exiled to the Seychelles Islands in the Indian Ocean. In 1938, the number of detainees reached 50,000. Their detention was to be reviewed after two years. It was the most violent year of our struggle. The first time the Arab regimes in, yani, introduced themselves into the Palestinian uh, conflict was in that year. Those were pro-British governments. And uh, rather than simply uh, take a position of solidarity with the Palestinians against the British, chose the role of uh, mediation. Now, on the other hand, you have the exact opposite uh, reaction in which uh, many volunteers would start flocking in what uh, uh, will, became, uh, will become known uh, as Jesh al Inqaz, the Salvation Army, and uh, fighting with their uh, Palestinian uh, uh, brethren. By the end of the Second World War, the British mandate began to collapse. The situation worsened when 100,000 Jewish survivors of the Nazi death camps found their way illegally into Palestine. Various plans for solving the Palestinian problem were rejected by one party or the other. One Arab leader, however, came up with his own solution. So the Zionists has, had two, two plans. First, how to expel the majority of Arabs in their part, in their Jewish part. And second, what to do with the Arab uh, part. Would, would they accept a Palestinian uh, state in it, of course, for them, anathema was a Palestinian state. 
So it was decided to offer that to King Abdullah, and that predetermined a lot uh, in the conduct of the war. King Abdullah of Jordan, aware of the imminent establishment of an Israeli state, was the only Arab leader to accept the 1947 United Nations partition plan for Palestine. Because his long-term aim was to unite Syria, Iraq, Jordan and Palestine into the United Arab Kingdom, an independent state promised to the Arabs by the British, who were at the same time working to establish a Jewish state in Palestine. For him, Palestine was an extension of Jordan. And now we know that he did engage in secret negotiations with the uh, Zionist uh, leadership, especially with Golda Meir and David Ben-Gurion. The Israelis were very keen at not having an independent Palestinian state. And so they suggested that the West Bank be taken over by Abdullah, and that uh, met perfectly with Abdullah's ambitions to create his greater Syria. Palestinians and Arabs protested the United Nations partition plan, giving the Jewish state 56% of the area of Palestine. The Jews and the Palestinians prepared for a confrontation. And although the Palestinians outnumbered the Jews two to one, the Jews were better prepared and well armed. They had a semi-independent government led by David Ben-Gurion and their military the Haganah was well trained and experienced. The Palestinians, on the other hand, had never recovered from the Arab revolt against the Ottomans, and most of their leaders were in exile. In November of 1947, the United Nations voted to divide Palestine in two. The British accepted and made plans to withdraw. But the Palestinians and the Arabs rejected the resolution. Of course, they refused it because they believed that they had the right to, to the whole of Palestine. But uh, nobody thought in terms of if we take over two-thirds of Palestine, then it would be much easier to claim the other third. On May 14, 1948, the day before the British withdrawal, the Jewish agency proclaimed the foundation of the State of Israel. The next day, as the last troops were leaving, war broke out. An Arab army was sent to defend the Palestinians. But some Palestinians were worried that several of those Arab troops, specifically the Jordanians, might be there to annex parts of their country. Jerusalem in particular was a concern. The Jordanians, under the command of 38 British officers, fought only in the United Nation areas allotted to the Arab state, including Jerusalem, while the Syrians, Egyptians, Iraqis and Lebanese invaded the territory allotted to the state of Israel. With regards to Jerusalem, and in spite of the good relations between Jordan's monarchy and the Jewish leadership, and the attempt at a peace treaty, the Jews insisted on occupying Jerusalem, but they couldn't because of the local resistance. Later on, the Jordanian army intervened. We had the capacity to move from defense to attack, but the British forbade the Jordanian army from doing so. After nine months of fighting, the Arabs were defeated. The Israelis captured 75% of Palestine, giving them an area one-third greater than the area assigned under the United Nations partition plan. The remainder of Palestine, namely the West Bank, was controlled by Jordanian forces. One of the main issues which uh, are rarely uh, raised concerning the Arab defeat is the pre-arranged war, if you want, between King Abdullah and the Zionists. So both yani, the Zionists and King Abdullah offset uh, the creation of two states. Uh, that's relevant at present because after uh, some 60 years, we're still talking about the same issue. Do Would the Palestinians have the right to have their state, at least on part of historical uh, Palestine? 
So that is an important episode of the 1948. It doesn't explain any, uh, everything, but it shows, it shows how and uh, the imperial uh, designs and dreams of Abdullah to, to have a greater Syria meant for him uh, taking over part of the land that belongs to the Palestinian people. We took it for granted. We are in the Arab house and the Arab house has to defend us. We could not separate between what is political security, international relations for Arab regime, and what is legitimate and international legitimacy for us in Palestine. When people left their houses in 48 and went as refugees to Lebanon, or to Jordan, or to Syria, or to Egypt, they went with the hope to return within months, within days. Can you say they were betrayed? Can you say they were used? This is history to judge. Over 750,000 Palestinian refugees fled to neighboring Arab countries, where they were housed in camps. The rising number of settlers led to resentment and clashes. The Palestinians did not view these new European arrivals as immigrants, but as colonists. In the 1920s and 30s, as the numbers of Jews reached new peaks, the Palestinians, supported by their Arab neighbors, began their resistance. There were... The fall of the Ottoman Empire at the end of the First World War left the Near East divided into spheres of influence. In a secret agreement known as Sykes-Picot in 1916, the Allies, namely France and Britain, carved the Arab world between them, even though Britain had actually promised independence to the Arabs who had helped them oust the Ottomans. While Lebanon and Syria were controlled by the French, Palestine was taken by the British, who had assured Sharif Hussein, leader of the 1916 Arab Revolt, that after the war, Palestine would be part of an independent, greater Arab kingdom. At the same time, acting British policy rested on the importance of Palestine as a strategic point on the land and sea routes to India and as the last stop of pipelines from the rich oil-bearing regions of the Middle East. The 1917 Balfour Declaration brought about the single biggest crisis the Arab world has faced in the modern era. By the late 1920s, however, they promised Lord Edmund Rothschild, a prominent member of the World Zionist Organization, a homeland for the Jewish people. A letter sent by British Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour expressed British government support for Zionist aims in Palestine. One of the key motives behind this conflict